Today I will take you with me to the expo in Jakarta, Indonesia about solar power. So let's head out, uh, go through the traffic and see what we can find over there. I've just arrived at the expo hall and let's see what boots they have. I've seen Dai, Eve, Victron, Solis and if we see some more interesting ones I will tell you. Next up is EP Ever. They showed me their brochure for their new MPPT, which I will show you soon. They also showing their inverter charger. Let's take a look at the board. This is called their residential solar system, but it can also be used off grid with a generator. This is their new MPPT. It's only been out for a few months, they told me. The maximum input voltage is 200, and this particular device is 60 amps. Then we have their off-grid inverter, their residential energy storage system. I'm now at the uh, Dai Inverters and this is their 10 kilowatt storage solution. These are all the batteries and inside their case we have the, uh, the transfer switch. Then we have the, uh, the MPPT and the inverter charger. These are the specifications of the system. So it's a, a modular system, you can use it for on-grid and off-grid. So if you don't want to uh, be on the grid, you can remove this one. And if you don't want the MPPT, you can also remove this section. And you can expand the whole system up to 2.5 megawatts of storage. Right now I'm at Dynas. Let's check their off-grid box. It's called the Ultra Cube with uh, two MPPTs. It's good for an off grid solution. Let's see the other side. Let me show you the specifications. So they have two models, they have one 2.4 kilowatt hour battery and one 4.8 this would be better and you can have a maximum solar input of 2.4 kilowatts and the inverter size is 2000 watts on 120 volts and for 230 volts it's 2400 it's quite a heavy one which is a 65.5 kilos or I think 130 pounds. So this is this is basically a bigger version of this one. This is more for home use or backup power. I met Lawrence, it's a German company specializing in water pumps. So the solar panel will be on top. A pump controller and then we have the well pump it's mainly used for irrigation and it's quite popular in Asia for example this system we have the solar panels the water basin then probably the pump controller and the pump in this house and then the lines going to the fields
I'm now at CM, Z1 Energy Technology. They mainly specialize in uh, structures to put the PV panels on the roofs. Let's take a quick look. Here you can mount them on the metal roof. They have three different types of mounting. With a, you can raise it up. You can put it directly on the metal roof or with another clip. Then you have all these special kinds of uh, attachments for the roof. They can also use a roof elevation mounting structure, like the one you can see here. They can also have uh, safety rails and also rails where you can step on. Let's take a look at some other mounting options. This is the uh, ground mount structure. This is quite popular in the US. And they also told me US customers prefer this style. They also have a different kind of steel structure. I think it's called a unistrut. They also make uh, agricultural mounting structures like the ones you see here. And also what I found special is they can uh, have a sloped tilt on the ground. So you can see the ground and then they can slope it at an angle. Let's take a look at their brochure. for the uh, carport. And which is interesting, they also have a balcony mounting structure. And the solar fence as well. So they told me, if you wanna buy these uh, mounts, you have to buy from China, and then they will ship it in a container so it was usually for uh, large projects. Right now I am at Solis, they are quite popular in Asia. This is their off-grid inverter, which they recommend uh, for people off-grid cabins. Then we move up to their bigger systems, which is a grid tight and also has a higher IP rating, because here you can see the, the grill. This has no grill. And we can move up to the higher power ones. I think this was a three phase. And then we have three phase uh, grid tight as well. Their interface looks really good in my opinion. And they're getting quite popular as a grid backup solution. Now I'm at uh, EVE. Let's take a look at their batteries. We have the 100 amp hour and the L has higher cycles compared to the M because the M has for 2000 cycles and the M is for telecom purposes so it's a little bit cheaper. 
here we have their uh, backup system. And these is the, are the liquid cooled uh, batteries. And here they have a battery with this, uh, a heat sink on it. I'm not sure why, and they couldn't tell me why, but I'll figure, I'll figure it out. Then let me show their, uh, their newest battery, which is 628 amp hours. So this one was the LF280K, which was uh, one of the first high capacity batteries. Then we move on to these two, and then now they have this new version. They also have a much uh, bigger storage solution. It's like a, a container. It's uh, five megawatt hours. So right now we're at Victron Energy. Let's see what they have uh, for us presented. We have their new GX device. their battery charger and then we have their biggest Quattro 1500 VA they don't have much uh, a lot of appliances here so let's continue to other vendors So we recently talked about the sodium cells and this is a sodium server rack battery. It's from Highstar and they told me there are 16 cells, 16 of these cells inside the battery. But what was interesting is that they have a DC to DC converter in the front, which is the heatsink you see here. And we know that the sodium batteries, they have a large voltage range compared to lithium iron phosphate. So here in this section, they will convert the low or high voltage DC to a suitable voltage range for the inverter. And they also told me the efficiency of this battery is 97% round trip. So now we're at Linyang Solar, and you know we use the uh, the big the big uh, solar panels, the big squares. And then the second generation is the half-cut solar cells. You will see the, the the white space in between the panel. And then now they have the third generation, which is one percent more efficient. You can see there is no line in between the cells anymore. And when we look at the half-cut cells, there is a small white line in between them. And since the white line disappeared, we move up from 13% efficiency to uh, from 23% efficiency to 24% efficiency. They also told me they mostly use this panel in Asia because it's better to handle. And this panel is the biggest one they have because nobody wants a bigger panel than this because it's uh, more difficult to handle. I finished the uh, walk around the uh, expo. There was a lot about ESS uh, systems, uh, not a lot about off-grid uh, systems, but it was interesting on the least. So if you found it interesting, you can uh, leave a like and comment what you think about it. And uh, I will see you in the next video.